Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. Who could forget the first time that Doc and Marty took off in the DeLorean time machine and went back to the future? Well, here it is, the snap kit from Polar Lights, number POL 911, from round two, the time machine from Back to the Future movie. It's a 125th scale kit, listed as a skill level one, and it's just a snap kit, uh, but it does require some paint for detailing. It includes 50 parts molded in gray, clear, chrome, brushed steel, and has vinyl tires. This release of the kit includes a brushed steel looking body that more accurately depicts the original movie version. And it has the plutonium reactor as well as the lightning rod and Mr. Fusion. So in effect you could replicate multiple versions of the car with this one kit. It's a simple build but painting is tedious and detail specific. So go to the internet Look for some reference photos to give you a great idea of how to paint your kit. And the only decals are the license plates with the out of time and barcode versions that are stickers. Overall dimensions are length 7 inches, width 4 inches, and height 3 inches. Here are the stickers that we mentioned, but we'll go out to the internet and download some graphics to supplement this build. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue but other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Grab these parts from the kit as the build starts with the dashboard. I went out to the internet and just googled DeLorean Back to the Future dash instruments and guess what? There they were. Just print them out on a color printer and use these for your dashboard I just um, used, cropped them to uh, the 17 millimeters of the instrument panel and the plutonium gauges are 15 millimeters and the time circuits were 8 millimeters. The details aren't great at that size but once they're in the dash you, you can't see them very well anyway so it's an impression more than detail. Paint the dashboard gray, the wheel black, and the clock gold. The components on the dash are painted in this order from left to right. Black, black, white, red, red with multiple color wires. Then add the instrument panel, time circuits, and plutonium gauges, decals if you made them, or paint those details into the dash and install the wheel and add the clock. We'll assemble the interior in multiple steps. All the parts here need to be painted gray and then the details added. The rear panel on the interior tub is flat black. Paint the time controller on the console silver and black for the shifter. Then add some color to resemble wires in the time controller. The seats can be added into place now too. Now add some detail to the back panel. There's multiple online sources for of photos of this thing so the actual part in the kit is overly simplified from the real item. I painted the control boxes behind the passenger seat black with some gold highlights. The flux capacitor is white with a black case. The circuit board behind the driver's seat is silver and add some gold to the small part beside that and the silver to the canisters. Now note the detail as you see fit and as to whatever references you can use. I did a simplified detailing here as much of it is not very well seen after assembly. Now finish installing the interior parts, add the dash into place and install the rear panel. Snap the door panels to the dash and the floor and the rear panel. Just for fun I found a scale copy of the Hill Valley Telegraph paper with the clock tower story and I sized it as needed, printed it out and I'm just going to fold this and glue it on the seat for a little added detail. Now pick out the uh, items on the rear panel as you see fit. There's a lot of references online. I did a simplified version using a few different shades of silver, some red, blue, green. Now paint the two parts and then add on to the passenger side green and then assemble them and add them into place. Paint the chassis pan flat black and then detail the motor and transmission with some steel color. Um, you can highlight other parts as you see fit. In the movie, most of the undercarriage was black for filming. On the underside, remove the polar light script with, uh, with a razor blade or scraper and then sandpaper it off. Uh, and also use a little uh, lacquer thinner and remove the copyright scripting there too. As I've mentioned, uh, it's a pretty simplified version for a chassis, but I just picked out some detail to add some interest. When that dries, flip it over and glue the interior tub into place. 
While the main body is already a stainless steel and looks pretty nice all by itself, there's some other areas that need some detailing. The rear bumper is black, the rear panel is gray, the inner rear panel is black, side moldings are black, and as well as the lower side panels. The front nose panel is gray, the front bumper is black as well as the spoiler, and the grille is black with the silver DMC logo. Wires on the sides are red and gray, and the cowl and the wipers are black as well as the mirrors. The rear window vents are black and so is the windshield molding. You can see the finished detailing here in the front and the back and despite the way it looks the original vehicles had a gray rubber rubberized bumpers front and back so that's the way they're supposed to look. Now install the windows with some clear part cement or white glue into the roof console and the side window has a small molding that is black the console is gray with black and silver highlights on the buttons and white on the inside. Now snap the window in place. Now snap the console into place. Now add the chassis to the body by starting at the rear at around 45 degree angle and then shoehorn the chassis into the body with a downward motion pulling the sides out slightly. It'll snap firmly into place. Now pull these parts out for assembly at the rear of the vehicle. The brake lights have an inset black frame with red lenses and white backup lights on the right. So paint the framework black and the lens area stop right light red and the inner lens is white. Now the framework is gray on the wire assembly. The lower connectors are a blue gray and the wires are red. The upper connectors are blue gray with silver and black components. Install the tail lights. And you can add your license plate now if you, if you wish and snap the lower panel into place. Then snap the top panel into the roof. Add each side panel lining up the tabs of the top and bottom to them. Now you can gather these parts from the kit for the front panels and we'll work on that next. Install the side parts to the wire panel and install the headlights using some Elmer's white glue to create a film on the lights for realism. When it dries clear it looks much more uh, like a real lens. Now paint the wire panel gray with blue gray connectors on the ends. The wires that are added uh, to the parts that were added on there, that blue pack, uh, they're black. Then install the front wire panel to the car. Grab these parts out of the back and uh, paint the rear exhaust units a flat black and add them into place now. Now snap the inner louvers into place in the rear panel and the lines are painted a steel color and they run from the outside of the exhaust to the back panel in the car. Now here you have to make a choice between the plutonium intake and the lightning rod conversion or Mr. Fusion intake. Now I decided to build the original Mark I version so I'll use the plutonium version. Now paint the base aluminum, the center mount black and the lightning rod steel. The jumper line is steel and the plutonium tube door is yellow. Now we'll Add these to the uh, vehicle by installing the intake to the area between the exhausts. And there is a jumper line from each side of the parts the intake sits between. Now assemble the rod base and snap it into place. Now pull out the parts for the wheels and axles. They're assembled next and note that there's smaller tires in the front. To give the tires a road worn look I usually rub them uh, the tread against some light sandpaper just by pressing and rolling them. It roughs them up and they, they look like a used tire. Now use a 50-50 wash of flat black and thinner to highlight the hubcaps and bring out the detail. Install the rims into the tires. Um, there are small rims for the front and larger rims for the rear. The tires are non-directional so they'll go on either side. Now match the front and rear tires to the proper locations. Now push one of the axle into each of the front and rear tires and then slide it into the uh, chassis and add the other wheel to the other side. With the wheels in place your assembly is complete. Here is uh, what the front end and the rear end of the vehicle will look like when you're finished. It's pretty cool. These are the only parts that you should have left over. The Mr. Fusion, the tube from the other version and the barcode tag. It's always fun building the TV movie cars but this one truly takes on a new dimension when it takes off. The fourth dimension of time. Now for an ultra de detailer this would be a great start. 
you could replace some of the electronics and wires uh, but it's going to take a steady hand to detail paint this kit although the actual construction is very easy anybody could do it but there's room for extra detailing and the stainless steel finish really gives it a real a nice uh, patina and authenticity um, everything went together very well there's no real issues everything fit properly and overall you're going to have fun and this is just a great kit to build and put on your display shelf we hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com Thanks!